بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہیلو ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ہوپ یو آر آل فائن آئی ویلکم یو آل ان کلاس آف ریئل انالیسس ٹو آور ڈسکشن از کنٹینیو آن فنکشنز آف باؤنڈری ویریشن ان دی پریویس لیکچر آئی ہیو ڈسکسڈ اباؤٹ فنکشنز آف باؤنڈری ویریشن ٹوٹل ویریشن اینڈ سم ریلیٹڈ ایگزامپلس In today lectures, we will discuss some important theorems on bounded variation. So the first theorem about bounded variation is, can be stated as, theorem says that, show that the bounded variation is bounded function, but converse may not be true. In this theorem, we need to show that A function of bounded variation is always a bounded function, but converse may not be true. It means that if a function is bounded function, then it is not necessary that it is also a function of bounded variation. So, how we will proceed this? Firstly, we will take a partition P of a closed interval AB. As we know that, A function f is called function of bounded variation over the closed interval a, b if the total variation of f that is represented as v, a, b, f which is actually the supremum of this sum and this sum is called sum of variation. So, a function f is called function of bounded variation if its total variation is finite. This is the definition of function of bounded variation. Further, this uh, total variation of f will be finite if the supremum of this is a finite real number in other words uh, this sum is bounded when the sum is will be bounded then automatically the supremum of this sum will exist so uh, next given that f is a bounded variation so its total variation will be finite Here it is given that function is bounded variation we need uh, not need to prove that the function is of bounded variation Uh, here we will assume, here we will take f is bounded variation. Our target is to show that function, uh, f is also a bounded function. So, given that f is bounded variation, so its total variation will be finite by definition of a bounded, function of bounded variation for all partition of closed interval AB. As f is a, a function of bounded variation, So, it will be function of bounded variation for all partition of the closed interval AB. For our essential, uh, suppose there is a partition P just containing a three numbers A, X, B. This is the partition of this closed interval AB. Now, over this partition, we can uh, we find the sum of total variation. That is actually uh, summation delta FK. And this can be open, this summation can be open as uh, F of X. value of f at second point minus value of f at the first point of the partition plus value of f at the third point minus value of the f at second point. Since f is bounded variation, so the sum will be bounded by definition. So it means that there exists a positive real number m for which this sum is less than equal to that positive real number m. So here uh, this sum By setting this sum less than or equal to m, we have these two terms will be less than or equal to that real number m. Since these two quantities are always non-negative because uh, these two quantities are absolute values and absolute value is always non-negative. So, that's why both of the quantities separately are the non-negative quantities. As we know that if the sum of two non-negative quantity is less than or equal to some positive real number m, then it is necessary that individually each quantity will be less than that m. This implies f of x minus f of a will be less than or equal to m. Uh, for example, I can elaborate this as suppose Uh, when we say, suppose, 8 plus 5, this is less than 14. Then individually, 
each of the number is less than their total sum. This implies 8 is less than 14. Similarly, 5 is also less than 14. So here the two quantities that are f of x minus f of a, this is the first quantity that is non-negative. Non-negative means greater than or equal to 0. And the second quantity is f of b minus f of x. The sum of these two quantities is less than or equal to some positive real number m. It means individually both quantities are less than or equal to that positive real number m. Equality sign is due to, suppose if one of the quantities is exactly equal to 0, then uh, other quantity will be equal to, will be less than equal to m. So, say this in quality equal to 1. Consider, next uh, uh, I am going to prove that f of x is a bounded function. We know that a uh, function f is called bounded function if there exists uh, some positive real number m such that f of x is less than or equal to that positive real number m for every x in the domain of f. So consider f of x can be written as f of x minus f of a plus f of a by using the uh, properties, property of absolute. Uh, this expression can be open as less than or equal to f of x minus f of a plus f of a by using the triangle inequality that is a plus b absolute is always less than or equal to a absolute plus b absolute. So here in our case f of x minus f of a plus f of a if we take this is equal to a and the second term equal to b then it can be written as this is less than or equal to a absolute, a absolute mean this is equal to f of x minus f of a absolute plus b absolute, b is here f of a. Now uh, by using 1, uh, this is less than or equal to m, so by replacing this number with m plus f of a, as f of a is a positive real number, because our f is a real valued function, uh, that's why this will always a finite positive real number. This is this quantity will always a finite positive real number that is less than infinity. So this is a finite positive real number. M is also a positive real number. The sum of two positive real number is always a positive real number. This implies f of x is less than equal to if we say the sum equal to m dash. M dash is a positive real number. This shows that our f of x, our f is a bounded function because we know that our function f is called bounded function. If the function f is less than or equal to some positive real number m for all x belong to domain of f. This shows that f is a bounded function. I hope it is clear. Uh, next we move uh, towards the uh, converse. Next we have to show that Converse may not be true uh, in this part. Our target is to show that if a function is a function of bounded variation, uh, if a function is a bounded function, then it is not necessary that it, uh, it is also a function of bounded variation. This part I have already uh, discussed in my first lecture on function of bounded variation. For solution, you can see example number one. Uh, there is a four parts of this example. In the fourth part, I have shared uh, an example of such function which is itself bounded but is not a function of bounded variation. Uh, link of the video is also available in the description box. I have. I hope uh, today lecture is uh, helpful for you. Inshallah, uh, in the next lecture, we will discuss our next theorem on functions of bounded variation. Further, uh, it is always remembered that 
an unbounded function cannot be function of bounded variation an unbounded function cannot be function of bounded variation okay allah hafiz